This one we're going to simplify rational expressions and solve some quadratic equations. So rational expression. Rational expression means the variable appears in the denominator. Variable appears in the denominator. So we see the numerator is a linear term and denominator is a quadratic term. So rational expression basically is a polynomial in the numerator and a polynomial in the denominator. Okay, so let's see. This one can be simplified. How? Uh, the numerator we have x cannot be simplified anymore, but we see the denominator x is a common factor of the two terms. So I factor out x from 2x, which is left with 2, from 3x squared, the left with 3x. Now we see x is a factor in the denominator. So we have x divided by x. That becomes 1. So this is simplified to be 1 over 2 plus 3x. Now it cannot be simplified further right? because the numerator is just 1 now. So this is done. This is simplified. Let's say 56. 56, we want to add those two rational expressions. And if you remember from, from previous one, we see this is a difference of two squares because 25 is 5 squared. So that means the denominator of x squared minus 25 can be simplified as x minus 5 times x, x, x plus 5 can be factored. The right, difference of two squares can be factored as this, two conjugates. One is minus, one is plus. And the second one, we just have one over x plus five. Well, adding two rationals is the same as adding two fractions. We need a common denominator. So the second one, we want to multiply by x minus five divides itself. Right. Basically, we multiply by 1, but this 1 is x minus 5 divided by x minus 5. Now we have common denominators. So we can combine the numerators by the operation, which is a plus key. So it says x plus x minus 5 divided by the common denominator of x plus 5 times x minus 5. Well, x plus x, this is a 2x. So the numerator of 2x minus 5, and the denominator of x plus 5 times x minus 5. And nothing can be simplified anymore. So that's it. This is that. So those are two rational expressions. Okay, so we switch our gear to solve some quadratic equations. Quadratic means the leading term is a square term, polynomial of degree two. So this is a trinomial. So trinomial, ideally, we can factor as two binomials. So this one, we can factor it as x minus two, x plus two, x minus one, because y, because the factor is 2 and negative 1. Why? Because negative 2 times positive 1 is a negative 2. And a negative 2, no, positive 2, I mean. Positive 2 minus 1. Positive 2 minus 1 is 1. So the middle term we're getting from adding the two factors of negative 2. So also we can try this way. x times x, x squared. 2 times negative 1, negative 2. That's how we get the first term and the last term. And the middle term, we get it from those. We get 2x, get negative x, 2x plus negative x, that's positive x. Okay, once in a factored form, we can use something called a zero property. Zero property saying if we have factors, you know, multiply to be zero, that means easy factor can be zero. So that means x plus two can be zero. 
and then x minus one can be zero. So we get the two solutions. So usually a polynomial of degree two quadratic can have two solutions, can have one solution, can have no real solutions. If no real solutions, we can extend it to complex numbers. They always have complex number solutions. Okay, so in this case, we have two solutions. Let's say 58. 58, again, we see difference of two squares, right? X squared minus four squared. We can factor that out, then use zero property to do that. Or, because we don't have a middle term, we only have the first term quadratic form, we'll have the number. So another way we could do is, we just move negative 16 to the other side to be positive 16. Then we can square root. When we square root, we get a plus minus two values. So that's just a plus minus four, because square root of 16 is a four. So x equals a four or negative four, two solutions. If we use the difference of two squares, it's a, it'll be the same answer because x minus four, x plus four, we can factor it as this. Then by zero property, x minus four can be zero, x plus four can be zero. Solve those two, we get a four and negative four. Okay, either way works, but this way is a faster, right? Because we don't have middle term to worry about. Let's see this. I think we have more. Let me erase all this. Yeah. Let's see this too. So 59, 59, we, th we, can, we want to think about the factors of negative 12 adds up to be negative one again. Well, that's negative four and positive three, right? Negative four times positive three, that's negative 12. But when we add negative four and three, we get negative one. So this can be factored as x minus four, x plus three. Then by zero property, each factor can be zero. Solve this, get a four and negative three. Two solutions again. Let's see this one. We want to think about two factors of negative 18 adds up to be negative 7. Also, that's negative 9 and 2, right? Because 2 times negative 9, that's negative 18. And negative 9 plus 2 give us negative 7. So we factor as x minus 9, x plus 2. By zero property, x minus nine can be zero, x plus two can be zero. It means x can be nine, x can be negative two, two solutions again. All right, next slide we're going, next video we're going to talk about um, simplify radicals, okay?